Hello and welcome to How to Know the Antichrist from the Book of Daniel. I'm Pastor Lane and this is an exciting subject. Some people think that some president is the Antichrist living right now or some prince soon to be a king or even a, a gosh a king or somebody or somebody has uh, six letters in their first name, their second name, I mean their middle name, and their first name. So there's a lot of speculation out there on who is the Antichrist. To be honest with you, I haven't a clue who the Antichrist is. There's some people that may, oh I'm sure, in this lifetime right now, that are uh, doing the work of it, or, or, or doing anti-Christ. They are anti-Christ, but they aren't the, the son of perdition, as far as I know. But they're candidates, possibly, someday, maybe. We don't know. But I am going to give you, in case you miss the rapture, some identity traits that you'll know who he is when he comes on the scene. But basically, uh, I wanted to, before we go any further, let's pray. Father God, we pray that you give us wisdom in this discussion in Daniel. We praise you for all you do, and we thank you for your Son. We ask your will in Jesus' name concerning this important discussion. Amen. Okay, well, first of all, uh, I am going to be focusing basically on two chapters. The first one is in Daniel chapter 2. Daniel uh, chapter 2. Uh, it's very important that is, this is discussed. And then J Daniel chapter 9. I'm going to briefly discuss J Daniel chapter 2 where it talks about, uh, let's give about, uh, oh, in Daniel chapter 2, verses 40 through 45, there's been discussion that the Antichrist would come from Europe, particularly in the Western European nations. But, there's a problem there, and you have to deal with what's indicated in Daniel chapter 9, and that's very important to understand. Okay, it says, I'm sure you've seen the statue of Nebuchadnezzar starting out with gold, bronze, silver, and then coming down in clay mixed with iron. I, I didn't get that good chronological order, but I do know clay mixed with iron is the revival of the Roman Empire. But let me explain something to you. When Rome was the Roman Empire, not the Holy Roman Empire, but before it became, you know, associated with Christianity in any way, shape, or form, Rome had control of both the West and the East. It was almost like the British soil at one time. They used to say the sun never, uh, the, the, the sun uh, always sets on British soil. And that used to be a phrase up till World War II. And they still have some power even today. But it's not as it once was. So you could say with Rome and the Roman Empire, the sun always set almost on Roman soil. They had trouble with the Germanic tribes up north, the Goths, Visigoths, all those uh, tribes people, and they were pretty barbaric too in their ways. I imagine there were examples in the battles where they did take, you know, when they sent a uh, treaty maker, uh, if they didn't approve of the peace treaty or surrender, 
they would send back a headless horseman. Uh, kind of cruel. I saw that in... What was that called? I can't remember the name of the movie. Oh, my goodness. Gladiator. So I imagine there's some truth to that, that they've had battles like that before they start a battle. Anyways, get back to our discussion. If you will note, the Roman Empire, after it was under the control of Constantine, and frankly, Constantine set up another Roman capital known as Constantinople. And so there were two seats of Rome, one in Rome and one in Constantinople. And so Constantinople is a key to the eastern end of the Roman Empire, now Holy Roman Empire, but under the control of Constantine. Now, what do you mean, Lane? What does that mean to us? Still haven't explained how Western Europe is not, not where the Antichrist is coming out of. Yes, I am. Because I'm incorporating in the eastern end of the Rome, revived Roman Empire three, actually four, kingdoms. And of those four kingdoms, they come out of Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great. And I had it here, and I can't... I was looking at it, and I just uh, flipped over it. Alexander the Great. There it is, 37. 37. Huh. I had it. Well, there were four kingdoms. It was a result of after Alexander the Great conquered all over the world and had world domination. But when he died, his kingdom split up into four groups. And I'm trying to find that fourth group. Let's see here. Hmm. Looking hard for it. And it just behooves me. Hmm. And it's interesting how the uh, let's see, residue or remnants of the Greek Empire mingles with the, uh, the final Roman Empire. I'll give you three of the four. One is Lysimachus, Cassandra, and Seucus. These were the areas uh, controlled by Alexander's descendants. They were, it was Alexander's kingdom from the river Euphrates to the river Indus, and at one time included the whole of Asia Minor. So we have in the, uh, we have Asia Minor, it looks like, as the fourth culprit in this situation. We're looking here carefully at the possibility of in the area of Lysimachus territory of the old Alexander the Great territory empire in Asia Minor, now known as Turkey, and it became a sovereign state in 1299. Now, the dominion of Seleucus, which now today is called Iran, Persia, became a sovereign state in 1794. Cassander's old kingdom of Greece regained its sovereignty in 1830. And the last of the four, Egypt. There we go. 
Egypt was the area of operation, uh, was given to Ptolemy, there, Ptolemy, and became a sovereign state in October 22nd, 1930. So uh, the four countries are existing in the last days, and the little horn is to rise out of one of these. And if you do not, uh, you see the, you, do you not see the, the place of the birth of the little horn is now being set up? Truly it is, his rise is soon, and he may be living today. Uh, the little horn is no one else because the end, but the Antichrist. And he shall rise up a, a, a one of the four kingdoms of Alexander the Great's descendants area of operation. The one which uh, is north of, at the time of this prophecy, uh, Syria. So keep your eyes on Syria according to Daniel 9. Very carefully watch that area of operation. Also, there is the possibility that uh, upon keep your eye on the country of the, not only Syria, but also Iraq. Iraq and Syria used to be united. And out of that territory comes the little horn, the Antichrist. Okay? Now, now do you see the connection? How it could be under Rome? Because this area of operation is under the rule of Constantinople, which is now Turkey, Ankara, Turkey. Okay? Uh, but no, it's still Constantinople. I, I, can't, I think I thought it was Ankara, but it's not. Constantinople is the border of Asia. The Turkey's divided up with Europe and Asia on the border of Europe and Asia. So there's a key connection, Roman Empire-wise, but it's in the eastern sector that'll pop out this little monster, this little horn called the Antichrist. So you can rule out any leader in Western Europe, in Russia, in the United States. It's just not going to happen. Okay? It's not going to happen because Scripture is absolutely true. You can't contradict it. I've seen people focus on, on Rome itself or, or kings and queens that are potential give birth to Antichrist. They are out in left field because of this scripture in Daniel chapter 9. And in particular, it's, I'm going to make be specific here in my uh, speculation uh, research and as accurate as I can be. I want you to check me out, though, to be very careful in discerning what I have just discussed with you. Go, go and study it and research it yourself. Uh, I, 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 I know that you don't want me to uh, spoon feed you. So I'm trying, however, giving you a head start to give you somewhat act acclamation to what is going to happen and where the